Hey everybody, how's it going? I thought we'd do a, a quick tip on uh, how to improve your, your print times by sort of being selective about what you need and do for infill. So I've got this um, uh, this model I've been working on. It's a simple little laptop stand that I did in Fusion. Um, and it's, uh, it's you know, it's, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. It's uh, two side pieces and then a brace that cuts across the middle. And if I use my normal slicing template, uh, I'm just going to do this in PLA. We can see that I am uh, I'm doing a 0.24 layer height because I don't care. I'm not trying to win a beauty contest here. Um, and I'm not doing any. I'm doing standard retractions, no Z hop, none of that stuff. And my infill, let's uh, let's call this 10%. Um, and we'll go ahead and slice this. I'm going to leave all my other stuff the same as far as feeds and speeds. So we got six hours and 12 minutes here. Um, and if we go to the preview, we will see what we all know we're going to see. Um, but as we start coming down here, right, so we've got our, our infill inside these two pieces at 10%. Um, and then down here in this, this brace piece, we also have infill at 10%. So, you know, at six minutes, six hours, um, I'm an impatient guy. And I also look at this from a, um, a functionality perspective. And it doesn't need to be super strong. It doesn't need to be super pretty. Uh, I want to print this in as fast a time as possible. So I know that I don't need 10% of infill or any infill really in most of these two side pieces. Where I really need infill is actually right here um, where there's these top layers. Um, but for the rest of the stuff, I really don't need the infill. Now you'd say, um, you know, you need infill here obviously, if you're going to support um, this top surface. Um, and then I got to thinking, well, I, you know, but I don't really need that. This thing is symmetrical. It can go up or down. Um, it doesn't, again, it's just really holding the position of these two side pieces. Uh, it's not really providing much, you know, much structural support or anything. So um, I don't really need an fill in there. Now, without infill, obviously this top would fail. So get rid of the top. So we're gonna do two things in this little video. Um, we're gonna actually cut the top off of this guy and, and basically print him like a container and hollow inside uh, with no top. And then over here, we're gonna use modifiers to only put infill where we want it and save the rest of that material uh, for another print down the road. So let's close out of this preview and let's do a couple things here. So first things first, let's, uh, cut, the, let's cut the head off of this guy. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. I don't even need to do that. Let's um, let's do a modifier first. So this is all about modifiers, um, and we'll take this one piece at a time. So the first thing you need to do is select which part of the model you're going to modify. So we're going to pick this guy first. I'm going to go up here to modifier. I'm going to add a modifier, and I add a box. And I'm basically going to put a box all the way around that thing, a cube, or essentially, or, or a rectangle. Um, and I'm going to make him, let's call it, um, 30 millimeters wide, 200 long and 25 tall. And I'm going to move this box so that it overlaps my model. Go back to my modifier here. And so I'm actually going to, so change the settings of overlap with parent model. So I'm going to add a setting that I'm going to actually change. And in this case, it is this solid fill. So this top solid fill layers, I'm going to check that. And hit OK. And my current setting is six. So I've got six top layers um, in my normal print uh, print profile that would print. I'm actually just going to change this down to zero. And um, OK. And then um, I'm also going to change. Let's do one more. Let's do another setting. So I'm going to change. Actually, I'm going to leave that alone. So now if I go start print and slice this one more time. Uh, I've saved a couple of minutes there because I'm not printing the top, but there's still gonna be infill because it's in my slicing template. So you can see now it's basically hollow, or it's not hollow, but it has no top and it just has the infill showing. So let's go back over to our slicing template real fast and let's edit it. And let's get rid of our infill density. I'm gonna change this down to zero and okay and slice. So we've, we've reduced by quite a bit because I've got no infill now anywhere. So that four and a half hours. So if we do the preview here and we see what this looks like, 
Uh, it's still printing the whole shape, but it's you know, it's just a just a trough now, just a container. Um, so that'll save a lot of time. And basically, when the print's done, I can flip this part over and use it in these braces, and no one would know the difference. Or I can just leave it open as a dust catcher. So now the other the other situation we have is that there is no infill now in here. So we only want to put infill to support these top layers. So let's do another modifier. First, we're going to pick the part we're going to modify, this one. We're going to go to modifier. We do the same thing, pick a box. And I'm going to call this one 35 by 35 by 35. And I'll go ahead and move that, overlap the model we selected there and go back to modifier and I'm going to plus and this time we're going to change our infill density. Okay. So remember we changed it to zero. So I'm actually going to change just this part back to 10. And now I'm going to duplicate that process for the second part. So, or this third part, we're going to pick the model, go to modifier, do a box 35 cubed. And let's go ahead and move it. And again, we'll overlap. And it doesn't matter if it touches or overlaps anything else over here because we've only told it to do something when it overlaps this model. So again, we'll go back and we'll pick our infill density because you, every time you add a modifier, you got to add whatever you're modifying, even if you're just doing the same thing over and over again. So there we go. So now we have no infill and no top here, and we have a 10% infill just in that overlap and a 10% infill just in that overlap. Now let's slice with the exact same template, not changing anything else. So we're at four hours and 48 minutes. So if you remember the, the first thing we sliced was six hours and 12 minutes, and now we're down to four hours and 48 minutes with just doing infill where we want it. So if we look at the preview, let's just go check it out. So now you can see that this thing's going to get essentially printed just like that. And if we scroll down, you can see there is no infill here now. But as we get down to the bottom, we now have infill supporting just that area uh, for those top layers. And really, that's all that's required for this. I don't need something super structural and great. Um, this will be plenty strong enough to stand up um, a two pound laptop. So there we go. Um, I hope this helps if you're doing something similar, you're struggling with something, but um, I mean, there you go. I mean, what do we save? Saved almost an hour and 20 minutes just in selectively filling only the areas within fill that we want. So um, anyway, hope this helps you and uh, talk to you all soon.